Introduction to Stash Hub. When you first log into Stash Hub, your fabric screen is your home page. You can navigate to other parts of the app using the toolbar along the bottom. So the next one along is patterns, then projects, your measurements, and then in utilities, there are a number of things, including notions, where you can store all of your buttons and zips. So when you first get started with Stash Hub, you're going to want to head to your profile, which is the icon in the top left. And there you can set your preferences. So for example, the number format, if you are in Europe and you prefer to use a comma as your decimal separator, you can change that there. And you can also select any currency. Your length units, you can change them individually on each record. But if you've got a preference of the one that you mainly use, you can switch it here and you can always mix and match as well. So if you buy fabric by the meter, for example, you would want it in metric, but then you tend to use shops that list fabrics with the width in inches. So like 45 inches or 60 inches. So then you could set Imperial as your default. There are also options to manage your account and links to find out more about Stash Hub. Then at the bottom of your profile are your user ID. So if you ever find any issues with Stash Hub, the quickest way for us to help you is if you use the copy button to copy your user ID and then you can email us by clicking on the contact us link which will just open your email app. It will also show the email address that you've used as your username in Stash Hub at the bottom just in case you want to log in on another device and you can't remember which account you've used. There's also the version of the app that you're on and the build number just in case you need to check whether you're on the latest version. Let's get started with fabrics. In the bottom right there's a menu with three horizontal lines. If you tap on that it will open the menu to add new fabrics. There are three different ways to add fabric into Stash Hub. So at the bottom add new that's the standard way to add fabric. So that will just open the fabric record and you can fill in all the fields as you like. Bulk add is good if you've got a lot of fabrics that you want to just add the picture, the name and the length just to get started to get them into the app. Magic input is best if you're adding fabric from a website. So there is a open text box. You can copy all the information off of the fabric listing online, paste it into the box and then magic input will separate out the information into the fields. So I'm going to show you add new the standard way to add fabric so first up you add a photo so there's a whole video about the different ways you can add photos but I'm just going to select an image from the gallery so you can add in as much or as little information as you like so the name of this fabric online is Kika but you can name it whatever you like description is just an open text box for any information that you might find useful so I'm going to add in fabric godmother exclusive design but you could also add in things like washing instructions in that box the purchase length and the remaining length are separate just in case you only use part of the fabric the width and the weight so you can filter by most of these categories if you want to find a particular type of fabric for a project so composition 100% viscose and since it's woven, this fabric doesn't have any stretch. You can add in a price if you want to keep track of your spending and this will show up in your stats. For the date, if you are adding a fabric you've just bought, you can click set to today. But if you are adding fabrics that you bought a while ago, you can just tap in the box and that will bring up the calendar. And if you don't want to scroll back through all the months, you can tap on the pencil and edit it. So let's say we bought this in 2020. Enter the shop and it will create a list of the shops that you've previously used. Thread match colours, so I'm going to put in pink, orange and navy. Then the design, let's have another look at the fabric. So although it's a floral, I think it's quite an abstract design. So I'm going to put this down as abstract so that if I'm filtering, I can find this under abstract. 
then tags you can add anything you like so perhaps you bought this fabric for a specific person or you bought it at a particular event I'm just going to leave that blank now but I'll show you some of my tags just um, so you get the idea of the sort of thing that you could use tags for location if you store fabric in multiple places you could always link to the website listing if you want the full information add notes and check off whether that fabric was gifted there are also options at the top to duplicate or delete that fabric so if we go back to the home page you'll see that currently the fabrics are ordered alphabetically but if we wanted to bring up our most recently added fabrics to the top, you can sort by date added, new to old. And there you'll see Kika at the top there. By default, you just see your unused fabric. So that's the fabric that's in your stash that's available to use for projects. You can also filter using the top bar for used fabric if you want to revisit some of the old fabrics that you've used in previous projects they're still there in your stash but they're not mixed in with fabric that you do still have if you have the stash hub plus subscription there are also options to filter so if you tap on this little funnel icon at the top right that will bring up all the filters and you can search for different categories so let's say we needed between two and three meters for the project we've got in mind and we want a viscose fabric and that will bring up all of our options that meet those criteria so if you go back into filters you can easily clear the filters there's also a search option which is this little magnifying glass icon so if you've got a particular fabric in mind that you're looking for, you can search and then easily find it. So now let's move over to patterns on the next tab. So patterns works in much the same way as fabric. So there's the same little three line menu in the bottom right corner. So you can bulk add or add new patterns. And there is also similarly filters and the search. So you can always look up a particular pattern that you're interested in and then you can check all the details. So you can add up to four photos on each record and I like to use the modelled shots from the pattern company as the cover image so I can see what the project might look like. And then I also add in the line drawing so I can see the details and then the charts about the sizing and fabric requirements. Then you can fill in all the details which are filterable and you can add in design features which you can filter in case you can't remember the name or the designer of a pattern and you're looking for a particular style. You can put in suggested fabrics and you can add multiple length requirements depending on the width of fabric that you have. I find it very useful to add in a link to the pattern website just in case there's additional information there and you can tick off whether you've got that printed so that you remember and you can even add attachments if you want to link to your PDF instructions. So now let's get to the exciting part, planning our projects. So as with the other record types, there's the menu in the bottom right with the three lines to add new. So let's give our project a name and then add our new fabric. Then patterns, let's find Mabel that we were looking at earlier. There she is. Then you can add more things to this section which we haven't covered yet, but you can add a person. So I'm gonna add that this project is for me. And then you can easily link to your measurements with notions. This project is going to need some shearing elastic. So let's find that elastic, shearing elastic challenges so let's say i want to make a long sleeve version that would be perfect for the long sleeve challenge 
you can add any notes. I'm really excited to get started on this project so I'm going to add it to up next and since it's long sleeves I think it will work well for awesome winter and probably spring as well. So let's say I'm starting it today and I want to finish it by the end of the month. Then as you go along you can tick off these boxes. So if you update how much fabric you've used for this project, so let's say we used 2.5 meters, once you tick cut out it will give you the option to update your fabric length and so let's say we've got a 0.5 meter remnant left and then when you've sewn it, it will give you the option of whether you want to update the status of that pattern as well so you know that you've made it. Then there are some tick boxes just to remind you to take a lovely photo and share it with the community. And then let's say we've completed that project today. You can update the status to complete. It will give you a little celebration and the option to share that project so that will, this will create a lovely shareable graphic that you can then download or share to social media. Once you've taken your own picture, the grid will rearrange to show your picture of your finished project as well. So you add your photos towards the bottom here. Once you've got your project all set up, let's go back and look at the list. So by default, this list that you see here just shows the incomplete project so everything that the status is set to planning or in progress and then at the top you can filter for complete so currently everything is sorted alphabetically by name but we can change the sorting to be completion date new to old so here is our Kika project and you can also use the search and filter as with the other records. So that is a quick introduction to Stash Hub. There's lots more to discover, so measurements and there's a whole bunch of stuff in utilities as well, so definitely make sure you check that out. Do let us know if you have any requests for future tutorials or any features that you'd like to see more in depth. Thanks for watching and happy stashing.